we have here three different springs with three different spring constants. We have uh, a weaker spring on the left here, moving to a stronger spring on the right from 25 newtons per meter strength to 35 newtons per meter strength to 50 newtons per meter strength. We have hung from those springs uh, the same weight. Each one of these is a 500 gram mass. Uh, and so therefore, we're pulling down with roughly a five Newton force on each one of them. And we can see that the weakest spring is stretched by the largest amount, all right? Likewise, then, since the springs um, have, uh, that, that we know that masses hung from a spring will undergo oscillations that depends upon the square root of k over m, where k being the spring constant, then we would expect that uh, the, um, the weaker spring will oscillate at a lower frequency. All right, so if I set this into oscillation, and compare that to this oscillation, and then compare that to this oscillation, we can see that this one oscillates at a much higher frequency than the other two. And even here, we can see that the weakest spring is oscillating at the slowest frequency. Okay, so now, focusing just on this strongest spring, we can actually, just by measuring the amount of stretch as a function of weight hanging from it, we can actually confirm this string, the spring constant of uh, 50 newtons per meter. Using a ruler, we've measured the distance to the bottom of this 500 gram mass uh, to be positioned at the 12.8 centimeter mark on this ruler. If we add another 200 grams, this length now stretches down to 16.7 centimeters and adding another 200 grams stretches it down to 20.6 centimeters. So we see that uh, with equal amounts of mass added incrementally that the stretch increases by the same roughly four centimeters. All right? But using those masses and these distances one can then plot the amount of stretch versus the restoring force and come up with the spring constant of 50 newtons per meter.